showmaker. Emotional moment and tears in the courtroom as the testimony in the Dr. Teresa Seaver's murder trial continued today. Taylor Showmaker, you saw there, the former girlfriend of Jimmy Rogers, took the witness stand. She was visibly upset, crying. She covered her face when Rogers approached the bench. It looked like she didn't want to look at him. Hi, I'm Patrick Nolan, along with my co-anchor Jane Monreal, who's outside the Lane County Courthouse, with more on this much-anticipated testimony today, Jane. Exactly right, Patrick. And Taylor Showmaker is now married to someone else. But there were there were several emotional moments from Taylor, the ex-girlfriend of Jimmy Rogers, who pretty much connects Jimmy Rogers to the scene, the murder scene, allegedly, uh, when Dr. Teresa Severs was murdered back in 2015. Let's bring in our reporter now, for in your corner, Sandra Rodriguez, who was in the courtroom this morning when all of this took place. And Sandra, let's talk first about her demeanor. Obviously, did, avoided that eye contact with Jimmy Rogers. Yes, as soon as she walked in the court, she seemed very emotional, wouldn't even look towards the side that Jimmy Rogers was sitting at, would, even had her head tilted to avoid that area of the room. At the time, she and Jimmy Rogers were uh, living um, boyfriend and girlfriend in Missouri. Detectives went up there. But before that, she already knew that Jimmy went to Florida and then yes. he, she had an announcement when he got back up to Missouri. Yes, yeah, she started by telling the jury members that Rogers had told her he was going to be going to Florida. So when he got back, she had some surprising news to tell him and this is what that news was. Did you have special information to share with him? Yes. What was that information? That I was pregnant. All right, so she said that she was pregnant, and then days after, uh, the, the detectives came up there and spoke to her first. Yes, but before the detectives went to go speak to them, she said that when they got back to their home, after he picked her from her mom's house, after returning from Florida, she did see a white cooler and the black backpack in the kitchen. There's some of the evidence. Some of the evidence has been presented. Now, when the state asked her what was inside of those items, she could not remember. She said she could not recall. But after the state allowed her to review some copies of some former statements that she had made, she said that instead of the cooler, there was a box of gloves and a pair of boots. Mm -hmm. And then inside of the backpack was that blue jumpsuit that keeps coming up throughout this trial. And it's one of those pieces of evidence that she led detectives to. And she says that that happened after the first visit from detectives to her home. And she became suspicious yeah. after Roger just told her that they had to take this trip somewhere and right. this is where that trip was to. First we went down to his work in Doe Run. And what did you all do in Go Run? Um, I sat in the car and he went in and got his phone and put under a water fountain and then crushed it and and then got back in the car. I want to bring in now Court TV correspondent and reporter Julia Janae. And we just heard Taylor testify about uh, she said that she wanted she was told to crush the phone and some other pieces of evidence, including the blue overalls that were allegedly linking Jimmy Rogers to the scene of the crime in 2015. Right. A lot of strong information coming out for the prosecution. But the defense on cross, you know, they are trying to attack the credibility of Taylor Showmaker. And they are also bringing up the fact that she might have financial motive to be there on the stand today, bringing up two things. One, that she may be getting paid from the Lee County Sheriff's Office to be there, which she refuted. But uh, they said that there, there is a program that she's getting $400 a month for, and also that she's been doing some media interviews and was paid recently to fly out to California for that interview. There are, yeah, there are a couple of holes in her testimony about being flown out to California. She said, no, I didn't go out to California. Well, she said she didn't go out to California to interview with Netflix. Okay. Later, she said she was interviewing with a docu-series company. So maybe a little bit of a mix-up of the words, but ultimately she was paid to fly out there with her husband and spend a few days in California. Mm -hmm. Defense trying to say that she's got some financial motives. Some credibility yeah. issues there as well. Do you think her testimony helped or hurt the defense? Well, you know, both sides were using it for what they needed it for. She's obviously a state witness, and they wanted her to bring out the fact that she heard from Jimmy Rogers that he said he did this, and he did it with a hammer, so that was strong for them, but it's up to these jurors to decide and weigh whether her testimony is credible and whether they will use it against Jimmy Rogers. Anything else we should know about their relationship? 
Well, she talked about the fact that he was a good father, that she would, did not want to come forward with this information. So that actually helps the prosecution because she's not a witness that was out seeking to turn her boyfriend in, but felt that she had no other choice. All right. Good point. Julia Janae from Court TV, thank you for joining us as well. We're going to hear from our legal expert, Dr. Pamela C. from FGCU. Like we talked about, she kept on saying, I do not recall. She had to refer to her notes. Does that help her testimony? Who does it benefit in the case? The defense, the jurors, the state? We're going to talk to Pam C. at 630. For now, we're live in downtown Fort Myers. Jane Monreal, Fox 4, in your corner.